this is Algebra 2, Lesson 39. We're going to talk about the difference of two squares, a parallelogram proof, and rhombuses. We're starting on page 176. All right, first, the difference of two squares. We've talked about conjugates before. Remember, the conjugate of a two-term algebraic sum has identical terms, but the sign of one term is opposite. So negative 2x minus 3y is the conjugate of negative 2x plus 3y. 3x plus 4 is the conjugate of 3x minus 4. a plus b is the conjugate of a minus b. Okay? When we multiply conjugates, when we multiply conjugate binomials, the product are not going to have a middle term. So, you remember when we multiplied um, a plus b times a plus b, we get b squared plus ab and ab plus a squared. So we have a squared on this side and b squared on this side and in the middle we have this middle term, right? When we multiply conjugates, we don't have the middle term. So let's try this one. We've got negative 2x minus 3y times negative 2x times 3y. 3y times negative 3y is negative 9y squared. 3y times negative 2x is negative 6xy. Negative 2x times negative 3y is positive 6xy. And negative 2x times negative 2x is positive 4x squared. Okay? So we've got negative 9y squared. Here we have negative 6xy, negative 6xy and positive 6xy. So they cancel. And over here we have 4x squared. Okay? Here we have 3x plus 4 and 3x minus 4. Negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. Negative 4 times 3x is 12x. Oop, negative 12x. 3x times positive 4 is positive 12x. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Here we have negative 16, negative 12x plus positive 12x cancels, and we have 9x squared with no middle term. The middle terms cancel. See? All right, we've got a plus b times a minus b. This time we'll do it the FOIL method. So the first are a times a, it's a squared. The outside is a times b, it's negative b, so this will be negative ab. The inside is b times a, so that's positive ab. And the last are b times negative b, so that's negative b squared. Negative ab plus positive ab cancels, and we're left with a squared minus b squared. Okay? Each of these products, a squared minus b squared, 9x squared minus 16, and 4x squared minus 9y squared, can be written as a difference of two squares, of two squared expressions. So we have 4x squared minus 9y squared. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x is x. So 4x squared is the same as 2x quantity squared. Okay, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of y is, I mean y squared is y, so this is the same as 3y quantity squared. It's the difference, we're subtracting two squares. Okay, over here we have 9x squared minus 16. The square root of 9x squared is, not, is 3x squared. The square root of 16 is 4. 
So 9x squared minus 16 is the same as 3x quantity squared minus 4 squared. So it's the difference, it's subtracting 2 squares. Okay, and of course a squared minus b squared is the difference of 2 squares. You will learn to recognize the difference of two squares, which will make factoring much easier. So look for these as you are factoring. Here are some examples. Solve 4x squared minus 9 equals 0 by factoring. Okay, so 4x squared is 2x quantity squared, right? And 9 is 3 squared. So this is a difference of 2 squares. And if you know that, then you can remember that the difference of 2 squared is formed by multiplying the conjugates of the squares, of the square roots of, the, of each term. So this is going to be 2x minus 3 times 2x plus 3. These two multiplied are going to give us a negative 9. These two multiplied are going to give us a 4x squared. If you add, if you multiply these two, you get negative 3x, I'm sorry, negative 6x. If you multiply these two, you get positive 6x. So the sum, the products of this and this added together cancel each other out, which is going to give you this. All right, and now we can solve for x. We've got 2x minus 3 equals 0, or 2x plus 3 equals 0. Anytime it says solve, that means we're solving for whatever the variable is. You need to keep going after this. Don't stop at factoring. All right, we're going to add 3 to both sides here. We've got 2x equals 3. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals 3 halves. Over here, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. 2x equals negative 3, and x equals negative 3 halves. Anytime you have the difference of two squares, when you factor them, x is going to equal opposites. It's going to either equal positive or negative 3 halves. Okay? So instead of writing x equals 3 halves comma negative 3 halves, we can just do it with a plus or minus sign. Every time you do a difference of two squares, it's going to come out with an answer like this. Okay, let's try another one. We've got solve 81m squared minus 25 equals 0. 81 is 9 squared. m is m squared is m squared and 25 is 5 squared. So that leaves us with 9m plus 5 and 9m minus 5. 9m times 9m equals 81m squared. Positive 5 times negative 5 equals negative 25. 5 times 9m is 45m. 9m times negative 5 is minus 45m. So the 45m's cancel each other out, leaving us with a difference of two squares. All right, now we can set these equal to 0. 9m plus 5 equals 0, or 9m minus 5 equals 0. Solve for m. Subtract 5 from both sides here. And 9m equals negative 5, divide by 9. And here, m equals negative 5 ninths. These are the kind of answers you're going to get most of the time. They're not pretty. 9m equals positive 5, divide both sides by 9. And m equals positive 5 ninths. You've done this correctly, this is what you're going to come out with. m equals plus or minus 5 ninths. Okay? Okay, now we're going to talk about parallelograms again. In your book, we're going to go to page 177. Okay, we remember 
remember that a parallelogram is defined to be a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. We also recall that a parallelogram has four other properties which are listed here. Number one, the sides opposite of each other have equal lengths. So AB is equal to DC and AD is equal to BC. The angles opposite each other have equal measures. So angle B equals angle D, angle A equals angle C. The sum of the measures of any consecutive angles is 180 degrees. So a, angle A plus angle B equals 180 degrees. Angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. Angle C plus angle D equals 180 degrees. And angle D plus angle A equals 180 degrees. And the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so we talked about properties 1, 2, and 3 in lesson 37. And now we're going to talk about property 4. Since the pairs of opposite sides in parallelograms have equal lengths, they use identical tick marks. So we've got two marks here and two marks here to show that these two sides are equal. Okay? The small shaded angles at B and at D have equal measures because they're alternate interior angles formed by the diagonal BD and the parallel long sides. Okay? The vertical angles marked at the intersection of the diagonals are equal because we know the opposite angles are equal. Thus, the third angle, remember if two angles and any tri two triangles are equal, the third angle has to also be equal. So this little angle at C and this little angle at A also have to be equal. Okay? So now we have an angle, 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 triangle. And we know that this side equals this side. So that makes it an angle, 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 side triangle again. So we've got this angle, 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 and this side and this side. So it's an angle, 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 side. And so congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that means that A has to equal C because that's the congruent part. This angle is opposite this part, not C, A to M and M to C. This angle is um, opposite this side and this angle, which is the equal angle, is opposite this side. So these are the corresponding angles, I mean the corresponding sides and the corresponding parts of congruent triangles have to be congruent. So A to M and M to C have to be equal. And the same is true of B to M and M to B. This angle is, nope. This side is opposite this angle, this little interior angle. And this side is opposite this little interior angle. These are alternate interior angles. So they're equal and therefore these guys have to be equal. Okay? So, since this side equals this side and this side equals this side, this means that these long diagonals actually bisect each other and they're cutting each other in half. Okay? So that is the proof of number four. You're going to be using this fact to solve things. But this is why we know it's true. All right, next page, we're going to talk about rhombuses. A rhombus is a parallelogram that has three additional properties. So everything that's true about parallelograms is true about rhombuses. A rhombus is a parallelogram whose four sides have equal lengths. So AB equals BC, which equals CD, which equals AD. Okay? The diagonals of a rhombus bisect the angles of the rhombus. So not only are the angles, the diagonals going to bisect each other, but they also bisect the angles. So this little angle one equals angle two. It's going to cut this angle in half. And angle three equals angle four. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular bisectors of each other. So not only do these diagonals um, bisect, but they're bisecting at 90 degrees. Okay, so this makes a right triangle, 
this makes a right triangle, this makes a right triangle, and this makes a right triangle. Okay? Since A, B, C, D is a rhombus, that means side A is congruent to side B. I mean, side A, B is congruent to B, C. Also, we know that in a triangle, the op angles opposite the angles opposite sides of equal lengths have equal measures. Therefore, angle one has to equal angle three. Because the rhombus is a parallelogram, side BC is parallel to side AD, and side AB is parallel to side DC. Therefore, two and three have to be equal because they're alternate interior angles formed by the diagonal AC and parallel lines BC and AD. Also, angle one and angle four have to be equal because they're alternate interior angles. So, one equals three and two equals three and one equals three and one equals four. We can also show that BD bisects angle B and angle D at the same way. So, the diagonals of the rhombus bisect the angles. The diagonals of the rhombus bisect the angles of the rhombus. Because the rhombus is a parallelogram, we also know that the diagonals bisect each other. To prove that the angles formed by the diagonals are right angles, we use the fact that the diagonals bisect the angles of the rhombus and the fact that the sum of the measures of two consecutive air angles in a parallelogram is 180 degrees. So, in a parallelogram, and a rhombus is a parallelogram, the sum of A plus the sum of B has to equal 180 degrees. This is half of A, and this is half of B, which means this plus this is, a, is 90 degrees, and that means that this angle X has to be 90 degrees. And these angles are all going to be equal because it's a um, rhombus. So if this is 90 degrees, then this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, and this is 90 degrees, which means that these diagonals do bisect each other um, at a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's all very complicated. They spell it out very nicely on this page, so if you didn't understand it in that very fast reading, go back and read it again. Okay? It's all pretty straightforward. Okay, let's try the example. DEFG, down here at the bottom, DEFG is a rhombus. The measure of the reflex angle is 280 degrees. Here we have reflex angle D. Remember, reflex angle is the angle outside. Find A, X, B, K, and C. Okay. So, that figure is on page 178. Since we have looked at that, you keep looking at yours, and I'm going to write on my page. Okay, so if the reflex angle is 280 degrees, then the 280 degrees plus A plus X equals 360 degrees. Because you see that goes all the way around in the circle. Okay? So if we do 280 minus 280, that means A plus X equals 360 minus 280 is 80 degrees. We know that A equals X because it's a rhombus and therefore the diagonals bisect the angles. So A equals X. If A equals X and A plus X equals 40, then both A and X, I mean A plus X equals 80, then both A plus X have to equal 40, because 40 plus 40 equals 80. Okay? The sum of two adjacent, ang the sum of two adjacent angles in a parallelogram, and that includes a rhombus, is 180 degrees. 
So if a plus x equals 80, then k plus b have to equal 100. And k has to equal b. So a plus x equals 80, and that means that k plus b has to equal 100. And we know that k equals b because k plus b is e actually angle G, and it's been bisected by the diagonal. If K equals B and K plus B equals 100, then K and B both have to equal 50, because that's half of 100. Okay? Here's A, X, K, B. That leaves us with C. C has to equal 90 because the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. And C is one of the inside angles formed by the diagonals crossing. So C has to equal 90 degrees. Okay? That's how you're going to pull these apart and look at them. Take your time and think about what you know about parallelograms and rhombuses as you do these. Okay? Try your practice problems and do your homework and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.